How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, and probably the main thing we're going to talk about is the official sale of WCW to the WWF. It was announced uh, a couple hours ago. Uh, we actually had this, actually we talked a lot about it yesterday, but it is now official. Um, and uh, the ramifications changed the entire business as we know it. In about 15 minutes, uh, there's actually a press conference that's going to be going on with uh, Linda McMahon and Stuart Snyder of the World Wrestling Federation. And uh, Alex Marvez is going to be listening in on that. So when that press conference is over, we'll have Alex Marvez on the show, and we'll hear a lot more about, uh, we'll basically hear a lot more, uh, or whatever they are, are willing to reveal. I have a lot of ideas as far as what's going to happen. Um, and, you know, probably what we will be doing for the show today is spending most of the two hours taking questions, and I'll do my best to answer when Alex is on. Maybe he'll be able to help if they clarify more things um, in the press conference and uh, just discuss the entire future of the business. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing good. Hey, does that mean that we're never going to have another WCW guest ever? Uh, Yes, I think that's... Well, I I do think that's... (laughs) I mean, I don't want to make a joke You never say never, but yeah, I think there's there's a good shot of that, actually. All right. Uh, we'll have to find out on that. But um, the uh, superstar Billy Graham was originally scheduled for today. We moved him for uh, to I believe April the twenty seventh. Which is too bad. I was actually really looking forward to to him because um, I actually just got another chapter of his book a couple of days ago, and it's a very fun book. But we'll talk about that in a month. We have more pressing issues. Uh, Brian, what's your thoughts on everything? I think the one thing that uh, worried me the most was I was reading that they uh, they sent out the press release and I'm looking at it, and they're talking about. You know, it's going to help the ratings and all this and that. And then they made the comment at the end about how uh, we might see the beginning of uh, interpromotional storylines or whatever as early as Monday. And I thought, well, that's, uh, that's holding it off and building it back up again. Uh, well, we might, I, I don't know. I was under the impression that, that they were going to keep them separate. and But there might be some cross... Um, there might be cross-pollination, but I don't think they'd be doing, like, say, you know, like a... Like interpromotional matches this soon. I mean, yeah, you don't know. Maybe, maybe these guys going back and forth, something like that. I mean, I wish more than anything that they would keep this thing separate and they would build it back up. They get it a TV show or whatever, and like a year down the road, it'll be doing really well. And Vince will just go, you know, why kill it? Why Possibly. Kill it? You know, I mean, I mean, when when we talk about plans a year from now, I mean, the one thing you got to know about wrestling is that, I mean, plans for next week change based yeah. on business crowd reaction, somebody waking up with a good mood or a bad mood. So anything we talk about, well, you know, like say next year's WrestleMania, you'll have the Hulk, um, not Hulk Hogan, God forbid. Actually, the negotiations for Hulk Hogan and WWF seem to have fallen through. So let's just say the um, a Bill Goldberg, Steve Austin main event at next year's WrestleMania. I mean, we could say that today, but between now and next year's WrestleMania, that match would probably change 15 times. I mean, you know, every year when it comes to WrestleMania main events, actually this year is probably the one where it didn't change. Yeah. I mean, because it was pretty much the plan all along. They did it. Um, but in every other year, it, it, there was always, there's always plan changes. Um, in fact, on Hunter's uh, conference call today, he was asked about the main event, and he said, well, it was talk about putting me in there, and I turned it down. Well, he didn't quite say it that way. He said he didn't want it. I don't think he would have turned it down if it was offered, but he, he said that, he said that he was on um, Hunter's. I, I heard most of Hunter's conference call, and it was very, he was very good. Um, but what he was, what he was talking about was that he thought that Rock and Austin should have a chance to do a classic, and he wishes in hindsight that last year that him and Rock had that same chance. You yeah. know, he didn't want to knock the other two guys in the match, and just said, you know, was the, the decision that was made at the time was to do the four way for you know the reasons of the whole McMahon family deal, and they did it. But you know, he wished that they would have. I, I think that. Since it was his first WrestleMania main event, I think he probably, in his own mind, wished he had a better match because it was actually one of the. I guess it was really one of the weaker uh, Helmsley main. That may have been the weakest Helmsley main event that, uh, of the whole year, wasn't it? I can't. Was there anyone weaker than that WrestleMania? Because that was not. A, that well, Vince was and Hunter was before the year, so uh, that'd probably take it. Which one? Vince and Hunter in December. Uh, that was before last. Yeah, that was December of the. That was out before, of the room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with thirty-one minutes with Vince or whatever it was twenty-nine minutes. Whoa. Um, let's see. So, what they bought is the videotape library. They bought the names and the trademarks. Uh, they, I believe, are picking up about 24 contracts. None of the, none of the contracts they're picking up are what would be called major players. They're all mid-carders. 
and um, they're going to have to renegotiate. I don't know how this is all going to go down. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions. Um, there is the potential uh, because every one of the contracts they picked up has a 90 day cycle, which means that they can cut the guy in 90 days and then resign them. Now, by cutting them, they would make those guys a free agent, which theoretically, theoretically, if somebody wanted to start up and had a ton of money behind them, and this is not going to happen, okay? I just want to make this clear right now. It is not going to happen, so don't get the speculation out. But if somebody wanted to, had a ton of money, uh, they could actually, you know, when those guys got cut and the, the big-name guys whose contracts they're not going to they're not gonna honor, if they would were to want to sign them, they probably could basically get this WCW crew. The problem is, is that, hey, then what do you do when you got them? You got no TV. And that's why it's not going to happen, because you, you would then have no TV. And plus, um, it's just, I don't, I don't see... I don't know. Well, I'm starting from it. complete scratch. I mean, no name or anything. Yeah, you'd be starting from complete scratch in a very tough time. Although, it's a very tough time, but that may not deter people. You know, I talked to some people who... Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of money that can be made on pay-per-view in wrestling when it's done right, obviously. Okay? Um, there's a lot of money that can be made internationally. Uh, the, when you've got a hot company, there's money that can be made touring. Uh, but when you're cold in wrestling, there is a lot of money that you can lose. And, oh, and, yeah. You know, the brand name... The brand name is cold, but this is wrestling, and, it, and you know, again, in three weeks it can turn around. You know, Shane McMahon will probably end up being the the guy who's running it, figurehead, and, and perhaps to an extent reality of WCW. And if they pump it up and they really want to make it go, and hey, they know they're wrestling, um, they know they, they know the wrestling business. They can, uh, you know, what can you say? They can do it. Uh, maybe. I mean, you know, it's nothing's a guarantee. Uh, so, in a sense, for the short term. This is the best thing for wrestling. It's not the best thing for wrestlers because there's no negotiation leverage anymore. And in the long term, uh, you know what? It's probably not the best thing, but you don't really know. Yeah. It's you a lot better than uh, some alternatives. Like if somebody else had bought it and died in six months. But then again, I guess this whole thing no, might be No, but then the end result would be the same. Then the end result would be yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So it's 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 that's a wash. That I mean, I think the thing about wrestling is the fact that you can uh, cycle guys in and out of a program. I think that no matter how cold something gets, it can be revitalized in wrestling. I mean, WWF it wasn't ever as cold as WCW is right now, but there were times when it was just like a bunch of big guys and horrible gimmicks and you know bad wrestling. But it sure as hell turned around. Well, it sounds it sort of sounds like that battle royal they're doing at WrestleMania. Yes. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, the you know it can it can be done with a facelift. I mean, one of the things that they probably should do, and they probably will do, is start um, you know keep the shows. I would keep the shows separate, but I would raid. You know, like the, you know your theoretical raid, like Shane McMahon has just raided, you know, say Hunter to WCW, mm-hmm. and he's a WCW guy, and he switches TV shows, and that way you can revitalize the week television show. Yeah, don't start actually doing the matches yet, but start doing, uh, you know, what they were no, doing. No, 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 but when the guy goes there. over there, when the guy goes over there, he'll be doing it, but you, but they're still, they're separate entities, and you still don't do any WWF versus WCW matches. Although, let's just throw out a name. In fact, take, take out Hunter. Let's just say Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's the one you sent, okay? The first guy that Shane McMahon or whoever it is raised is Kurt Angle. You have all of these Kurt Angle new matches, okay, but they're not interpromotional matches. They're not called interpromotional matches. But everyone in their mind will think of them as interpromotional matches before many months down the line you actually do the interpromotional matches. So it's, yeah. it's, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, you know, you could bring in some of the the middle guys. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, the other thing is there are a lot of wrestlers and a lot of big-name, high-paid wrestlers right now that are going to be in for a very rude awakening <laughs> because this business has totally changed. And, I mean, I'm not just talking about... I mean, they're not going to be getting their million-dollar contracts. That's a guarantee. You know, although some of them have, some of them are going to get paid by Time Warner for a while anyway. Yeah. But but um, they're not going to have their, their big contracts after the contracts run out, and some of them uh, may never be in this business again. Mm-hmm. I mean, at, at that level, I mean, they may work indies and all that, but I mean, as far as, I mean, that includes some big names, um, it, including perhaps Scott Steiner. Uh, I would say Lou and Bagwell, maybe Jeff Jarrett. Um 
They had a meeting yesterday. They cannot that, bring in Luger and Bagwell. No, they can't, and I don't think they will. The um, WWF had meetings yesterday and started talking about personnel, and, and you know there are definitely names that, that they are not going to take. And, you know, some of the big names, like the ones we talked about, there are names that they will not take. Uh, there may be some names that they're going to make sweat. Um, there may be names that they're not going to take for other political reasons, and there'll be, you know, a lot of guys that they will take. So, anyway, uh, that's the situation, situation there. Anything else? I think they really need to start off with one huge name jumping over. Because, I mean, uh, it's like, you know, when guys were, were moving back and forth, you know, before Hall and Nash went over, just mid-card guys, it really didn't mean anything. It was like Hall and Nash came over, and that was the beginning. And they needed, I mean, it doesn't uh, need yeah. to be two guys, just one huge name, and everyone's going to go, wow, something's happening. Hunter's a guy. But then the timing isn't right because of Rock being out. So I don't, you know, and plus Hunter and Austin still is the, um, yeah, it's still the, the match they should go to based on what they booked. Yeah. Well, they don't well, necessarily have to uh, have him jump on the first show. But, I mean, as soon as they start switching talent, the first, well, first guy of all, the other, huge. The other thing is the first show probably is months away. Yeah. I mean, so, they're not you know, starting. They're not going to be starting on, I, don't, I don't think they're going to be starting on TNN, say, a week from Friday. And, and TNN, by the way, is, is probably where it's going to wind up. I mean, it's going to have to be on a Viacom station. But the thing on that also is TNN is not that hot on adding more wrestling. And the climate, this is another thing that has become very clear the past week and, and even more clear today, is that the climate in television is very negative towards professional wrestling, both because of the stigma attached to it, and then forget about the ratings. It's just, they're not, you know, obviously, by, uh, you know, TBS and TNT, and TNT canceling the show, that, that that took away a lot of outlets. Obviously, the fact that uh, the Fox thing didn't go through tells you what Fox thinks. I mean, an ECW tried, oh, ECW is a perfect example. ECW had six months to try to negotiate something new, and ultimately, they could not. I mean, Bischoff had some time. You know, it wasn't a lot. Um, he had about three days, but he couldn't do it. But, I mean, they got turned down by everyone. You know, everyone got turned down by everyone. USA doesn't want it. Um, you know, E doesn't want it. Fox doesn't want it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants wrestling. And except for and, and TNN, I don't know that how hot they are for it because, I mean, when it was talked about today, uh, from what I gather, I mean, they're talking about like a late-night slot, not a primetime slot. Or perhaps a Friday night, which is not the greatest night, but I mean, to me, the night of the week. If you got a great wrestling show and it's on Friday night, wrestling fans are going to watch it. Yeah. I mean, WCW Saturday night, except for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I know. WCW Saturday night was on from six to eight p.m. for a hundred years and, and drew monster ratings for many of those years, uh, for, for probably twenty-seven years. Um, and for a lot of that run, drew big, big ratings. It's actually the hottest rated show on cable, and it wasn't even in prime time. So it's it's. If you got a good show, wrestling fans will find it. And if you got a bad show, and this goes for television in general, if you got a bad show or a show people don't want to watch, they're just not going to watch. Yeah. So you know. Another thing I was thinking about was um, even if Eric Bischoff on Tuesday talked to Fox and they finally went, okay, you know what, we will give you, uh, we'll give you this slot. Doesn't mean that Vince couldn't have just come right in and just bought it right up from under him again. He bought the company by outbidding. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But but if he had had that slot. Um, any contract that Vince didn't pick up, those guys would be open for, for, for Bischoff, and if they didn't want to spend, you know, any, if they didn't want to spend over a million dollars for any piece of talent, that would mean all those million dollar guys, which are the key guys, Bischoff could still get. Yeah. And, and use as a nucleus. I mean, Vince could, you know, buy the contracts he wants of the, of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, if he had that, if he had had that time slot and they would have agreed, um, even if they didn't buy WCW, um, they could have been in the game. And they they're not. something. Yeah, they're not in the game, and I don't think there's any chance of them. I don't say no chance, because um, anything can open up at some point. Right now, it is not happening. Okay, it, 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 uh, Six months down the road, three months down the road, you know, who knows? If one of these stations says, you know, we want to do... If Fox says we want to do wrestling, there are going to be big-name wrestlers available and uh, to, 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 to start from. There will be, because Vince will not take everyone. Unfortunately, the ones he won't take are going to be the problems and the overpaid guys and, you know, the guys that put WCW in the position it's in. But, you know, if, if Fox wants it, they can do it. But if they wanted it, they should have said yes this week. Because mm-hmm. then, they, you know, it would have been a lot easier. We well, could always look at it as maybe... Uh Maybe a year or two down the road when they start doing some interpromotional matches and things heat up, 
some uh, networks can go, man, look at this. We need to get some wrestling. And then you go from there. Um, if, yeah, they create a boom with this. Someone's, you're right. You're right, John, at that point. You're right. Um, and also, if they keep the product clean, it's really important right now, I think, for, for wrestling um, in general, is to keep the product clean now because anything negative um, is going to be jumped on. And, and one of the reasons why nobody wants to touch it is because the stigma of wrestling right now is, is so bad. And, you know, Vince can get away with it because he's the number one rated show on cable and because, you know, TNN, they, you know, they obviously, they built their whole network around him, so he's going to be able to do what he wants. But it affects everyone trying to get in. Um, and it will affect them because so many sponsors right now will not do will not do wrestling even with the ratings it's doing and if there is a slide in the ratings he's going to need the sponsors I mean if, if his numbers stay big or, or grow uh, he can kind of do what he wants but if there's any kind of a slide and, and all indications are if you look at the UPN numbers just an example there's a slide obviously the TNN numbers are a slide um, when you look at that uh, you know they they really uh, you know, they, it's one of those things where they think they need to keep the product clean, um, or whoever goes in. The thing is, if you go into another network and you say, "Okay, you know, we're not going to be like them. We're going to keep the product clean," the network just thinks, "But it's still wrestling. It's got that negative connotation." Yeah. So, um, and sponsors, you know, sponsors aren't jumping on the wrestling bandwagon even with the numbers, and and that was one of the things. Obviously, if they were, I don't think that I, even Jamie Kellner not like in wrestling. I think that was one of the keys right there is that, like, okay, you know, it does better than average ratings on TNT. But it doesn't make better better than than average money. But it doesn't make better than average money, exactly. And it's no longer cheap programming, which is part of the problem of of the stakes being raised so high. Is it to compete, you've got to spend so much per episode. I mean, in the old days, wrestling was such cheap programming, it delivered big numbers. didn't get the advertising revenue it, it could have if it was another show, but it was so cheap to produce that stations used to make tons of money. On, on local wrestling. Mm-hmm. So, but that's, you know, I mean, that's that's changed a lot as well. Anything else? As far as that, I don't think so. Okay, let me look at some more notes that we've got here. I want to mention also that uh, WrestleMania, we're going to be having the big special uh, from midnight to 1 a.m., and um, it's going to be a four-hour show, I guess. Uh, not so much a post-game show. From what I understand... Uh, from what I understand, the post game, whatever post game is going to be in the four hours, will not be all that long. Uh, let's see. This is uh, how do, do you react? This is a poll question. How would you react to the news that WWF has purchased WCW? A, good for the fans, bad and for the wrestlers. Good for everybody. B, it's good for the fans, bad for the wrestlers. C, bad for the fans and for the wrestlers. D, some short term good but bad long term. And E, bad short term but good long term. So I think it covered every base. Uh, let's see. Uh, who would you rate as the person most responsible for the fall of WCW? Eric Bischoff, 26%. Hulk Hogan, 22%. Kevin Nash, 13%. Vince Russo, 26%. Actually, Vince Russo had a couple more votes than, than Eric Bischoff. So technically, Vince Russo did win. And Brad Siegel, 13%. So uh, that's the deal there. Let me get these. This is actually from the uh, press How about like a cruiserweight promotion? In, in a sense, what do you mean by that? I mean, if somebody open, really, open a, if they had the open. money, that was that would be something that maybe could compete because Vince probably will never never do it. Have you seen the, the demo of Matt Rats? No, not yet. But I've wrestled some of the guys. Okay, I uh, Matt Rats is it's it's really impressive. Um, I mean, uh, as far as I saw moves watching, I, I watched. Um, I guess it would have been the like a pilot episode. I watch moves there that I've never seen in my life, um, and 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 some of them very well executed. I don't know how much they edited and stuff like that. Edited out bad moves because it really didn't come off as sloppy bad wrestling. It was sort of like you're going like whoa. In fact, in my, in my reaction to it was very similar to the first time I saw Randy Savage and Bob Wharton Jr. about 25 years ago, 23 years ago, when when they were like wrestling for um for that old ICW company. And they were doing all these moves, and I'm going like, no, wait a minute. These aren't big-name wrestlers. I watch all the big-name wrestlers. These are indie guys. You know, little, you know. 16, like, 17. What? No, they weren't 16 and 17. They were, they, I mean, Bob Orton Jr. had wrestled. Oh, I was talking time. about the Matt Rats guys. Yeah, the Matt Rats guys are, are um, it looks like they range in age from, like, what, 16 to 20? 15 to 20? No, no, well, Harry says 14. So 14 to 21? Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, that age, um, it's not a wrestling that's going to appeal to a lot of people because the whole aim is at teenage girls, and that may be its downfall because I don't know if you can do pro wrestling, aim it directly for teenage girls, and, and be popular enough. But I tell you what, for for high spots, I mean, it was um, it was very, very impressive. And from production values, it was very, very impressive. But it's very much catering to a very young market. I mean, you know, I, I just couldn't see an adult watch it for more than five minutes because it's so teen. You know, it's like watching Teen Beat or something, you know? Yeah. I think I got a whole question from yesterday that we never got to, uh, which is, what did you think of WCW Greed? Oh, this was bad news. Thumbs up 14%, down 5%, in the middle 11%, didn't see the show, 70%. So I guess that tells you about that final buy rate, which doesn't surprise me. I mean, the feedback that uh, that we got on that, as far as volume, was Low. just about the lowest. I mean, it was like so little response. Uh, it was. I think there was one show a couple months ago that may... I think there was one show where actually website response we got was lower, but that was when we had all the problems with the web, so it probably isn't fair because we probably have, like, you know, tons more visitors. But, like, on this thing, you know, I mean, this response, this is a fair response. We've never gotten 70% didn't see the show uh, for any major pay-per-view ever. Yeah. And you know what else on Saturday night? I didn't get one XFL letter. Nothing on the last XFL. That's right. Well, and look what the rating was. One thing is, you know what? They may go up in ratings this week. Cause I don't think they could possibly go down. Or they can. You say that every week, though. Well, Although this one I mean. agree with you. I don't think it can go below this. I don't think that it can go. I think, that they, I think that they've really hit rock bottom on this one. Now. Are there any holidays this weekend? Let me check. No, there's not. Okay. <laughs> one eight. Groundhog Day. I don't know. I give it a one eight. Um, they still got the basketball they're going against, so it's not going to, you know. I mean, and so, so not gonna, they're not going to go up a whole hell of a lot. Oh, let me see. There was something else that I was going to bring up. Oh, oh, the Mushnick thing. We listened to it after the show, and um, Phil Mushnick did not do very well. I mean, it wasn't uh, it wasn't so much what he said. It's the way he said it. No, it was I mean, He came delivery. off exactly what everybody wants him to come off as. Yep. Um, actually, it, it was, you know what's funny about it was in one week, you know, like in the McMahon thing, you know, when, when Vince McMahon was on with Bob Costas, it really wasn't, I mean, there were things he said that you could go, okay, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of, you know, there, there, were, there, were, there were certain things. I mean, I, in this week's Observer, I kind of ran through all that. But nevertheless, if he was very calm and Bob Costas was very calm and they were just discussing it and they actually used the same words and Vince didn't do the, you know, don't get in my face and, or, you know you know what I mean? All that stuff. And Vince would not have come off bad because, you know, in the XFL thing, um, which actually was, he, you know, the, the XFL was the one where he, no, I shouldn't say that because there was they brought up the uh, that whole uh, uh, Trish Stratus thing was a real tough one. That was a tough one to defend under any circumstances. But anyway, the point of all this is that he would have come off all right. And if Phil Mushnick had brought up the same points that he brought up, but he was calm and everything, I don't think he would have come off that bad. But by and Vince McMahon was totally calm, you know, and and, and he had every right to be because all he had to do was keep his mouth shut. And the delivery of Phil Mushnick was just burying Phil Mushnick. I mean, I you know if you listen, you know, I mean one thing. It's, you know, for the public, you know, it's not the points. You know, that's one of the, uh, you know, I, I, I always like to say, okay, let's, let's look at the points one by one. But for the general public, it's not the points. It's who's the calm one in the situation and who's the one who gets out of control. And, uh, you know, Phil Mushick was out of control from, from the first second on that phone call, and, and he did himself a, a terrible disservice. Um, believe me. Because, I mean, he can't, you're right. He came off like everybody wished he would. Yeah. And uh, that's not good because when, when, it... It basically kills the points, whether they're good ones or bad ones. And anyway, we've been through that. Uh, let's see. This is from any, anything else to get to before we start hitting emails? What about SmackDown? I think we could talk about SmackDown. Um, yeah, it was it was a better show probably on television than uh, than live. But you know, I mean, I was hitting that fast. You know, I watched on tape, and I was hitting that fast forward button a lot last night, more than any actually. SmackDown. What? So more than any SmackDown I can remember. Yeah, I mean. I was sitting there watching it, and every time I hit the fast-forward button, I was like, you know, I can completely understand these people that paid money to sit in the crowd, why they would be angry. But, you know, what I did fast-forward through, I liked. I thought the Rock Austin thing was too long. I didn't dislike it, but I thought it was a little long. I mean, the the last, the uh, main event was a good match, like every WWF main event is. 
Uh, wasn't like, you know, wasn't like classic. Um, you know, I kind of like the slow tease of um, Angle and Benoit, but if they were going to do that, they probably should have done it about four weeks ago. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, the one thing, too, watching the uh, Rock and Austin uh, interview with uh, Jim Ross was, it was like, Austin, it was just like I was talking about the other day, he came off as like this badass that just didn't care. And Rock, they had a couple of camera shots of Rock where he's looking at Austin in just the most weaselly manner, and he just came off like such a prick. And I thought, you know, I can completely see more than ever now why people are going to cheer Austin. He's just yeah. He's well, that's why they had that's why they had Vince do that thing um, last night was because they felt it was basically Vince felt he needed to sacrifice himself to make sure that Rock got a big baby face pop. Yeah. And I think it uh, kind of worked what they did with uh, Austin sitting there and getting up like he's going to leave and then coming back with a beer. With a beer, yeah. But, you know, that's what Austin's supposed to do. Well, yeah. that That's a, actually an angle that I, 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 I figured that was a Pat Patterson angle because I saw that one as a kid out here. Mm-hmm. That exact angle. Not, not, not the exact angle of, uh, you know, someone sitting there with a beer, but when Don Morocco first did his heel turn on Pat Patterson, um, what it was was a um, couple of heels... And I wish I remember who they were. I'm tending to think that one of them was an invader, some ass dude. And I don't even know who the other one was at the time. But anyway, two heels. Maybe they were both invaders. But anyway, they're beating on Pat Patterson. And Don Morocco was like there. And, and like he comes out to do a run-in. Okay? Like, and you just expect he's going to make the save. And then just stands there and kind of walks around the ring. And that was the beginning of the turn. And I thought that was, like, so clever because, you know, in, in, when, you, when, you, when someone's going to turn, you know that what they do is they, they'll do the run-in, they'll look like they're going to help you, and then they're going to join for the beatdown, right? And I thought mm-hmm. that by not doing it, it was just... I, and you know what? And it was far more effective than doing that one, which is the traditional way of doing it. Yeah. So, anyway, so that's what it reminded me of. Um, I thought Spike Dudley looked really good last night in that six-man. I felt really bad for Spike, though. He's going to take a lot of... I mean, what a role. The role is to just get beaten on the whole match, and then you make the hot tag... And then you get beaten on afterwards. Yeah. Uh, Rhino yeah. definitely looks small. He it? did. You know, I mean, kind of like uh, just... Ben White doesn't wrestle small. Of yeah, he's true. Spike Dudley to be brutalizing in there, so. Yes. But, uh, the one, the one Spike, though, Spike did all that stuff in ECW for far less money. Mm-hmm. So at least, you know, yeah, he's going to... He's going to take a pounding, but it, it can't be any worse. I mean, he's not going to be jumping off balconies like he did in ECW either. No. So, you know, I mean, it's it's better for him. It's better for him in the long run. But, uh, yeah, he's he's going to be, you know, getting pounded on. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. Just too many videos, too much XFL. The videos are good. Just too many. Just too many, and they go on forever. Yeah. I mean, the Rock Austin stuff, I love those videos. I love them. But between that and the interview and the other videos, I mean, I was just zap, 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 you know. You know what I thought was also kind of really strange last night was Hunter attacks the Undertaker, it's him with the sledgehammer or whatever, Undertaker bleeds, and then they have, like, three shots. One shot is color with blood everywhere. Then they have the second shot in color where it's digitized, which actually looked even more gruesome. And then they have the third shot in black and white. And uh, it was just... Something weird about how you'd have the two extra shots, even though you'd already shown the one shot of him bleeding in color. Mm. They, uh, the show did a 4.2 rating, which is, I would have to say, disappointing because Friends was in reruns. There's no Survivor. You know, they did have the NCAAs against them, but that draws about half of what Survivor does. So the competition, this is the easiest night of competition in a long time. So, uh, anyway. Let me see. Let me get to some of this. Is Limp Bizkit playing at WrestleMania? Those Rock Austin commercials with the Limp Bizkit song are awesome. Not that I know of. Uh, but they, this, yeah, I think the videos are really good. Uh, let's see. This is going to be the most anticipated Monday night in the history of wrestling. This is not from Tony Giovanni either. One week from WrestleMania, the final night, where my question is, do you know some of the guys in WF, the WF is interested in right away that, uh, that they would bring in to kick off the new WCW? I mean, I think pretty much everyone's going to be there. You know, that... You know that that was planned to be there, and I, I don't know. You know, Shane's going to go there, or someone from WF will go there. I expect they'll have some influence on the show, though. So whatever plans there were for the show are probably all going to be changed. And as far as Did anybody whose uh, contract was picked up, know that it's been picked up. Uh, that I do not know. Um, I, in fact, I was saying they don't. I, I would think nobody knows because that's all stuff. That's all stuff that was talked about yesterday. I mean, no one's. You know, no one. No one would have been contacted yet, unless you know, until the sale was announced. Yeah. So, I mean, they'll probably start contacting people 
I would guess, I guess the first interaction would be Monday. Mm-hmm. When they go down there, if they do, if they go down there. Because I have a short list that goes, uh, da, 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 da. here's the list I've heard about, I guess it was the list of guys who they bring in or kick off. Booker T, uh, Booker T's contract was not picked up, but I am sure they will, I am sure they will offer him a deal. Shane Helms' contract will be picked up, I'm almost sure. And these, you know, these decisions have not been finalized internally even, but I would expect that just because I know he doesn't have a big deal. Chuck Palumbo, I cannot imagine uh, them not taking Chuck Palumbo just because of the potential there. Sean O'Hare, same thing that I just said, and Chavo Guerrero Jr., I'm sure they'll take. So, anyway, and probably, uh, probably except for Booker T., I would guess that all of their contracts will be picked up. What about Rick Steiner? Um, but not Rick Steiner. The thing with that also, though, is, you know, the contracts are going to be picked up that, that every contract I'm told that will be picked up will have a 90-day cycle, and every one of those will be cycled out, and then Jim Ross will have to renegotiate. Basically, everyone there is going to have their contract renegotiated. Either they're not going to be picked up at all, they'll be free agents today because they don't want to pay them you know, big money for short term, or the ones that have a certain guarantee but it's not huge money, they will pay them that money and then cycle them out and then renegotiate them on the terms that the WWF wants. Um, so basically, like, like we said before, if someone was out there, uh, there's almost any piece of talent, if they wanted them bad enough and wanted to bid enough for them, and you know WF will not get in a bidding war over anyone, you actually could get anyone and everyone if you really wanted it bad enough. But that's not, again, it's not going to happen. Well, if they've got it. 90 days, I don't even know when the next cycle ends, but, you know, WWF well, they, a lot of times will be renegotiating before anything happens. So they could have everybody renegotiated and basically signed before that cycle even ends. No, but I'm saying if someone was out there and the word was they were out there willing to spend money, the guys in that thing during that 90-day period can just sit, let it run out, and then go. It's not yeah. like they're, they're tied for life. I mean, like, yeah, if WF signs them, of course, then they would then they would be locked in. I'm just saying if you wanted to, the, the theoretical opening is there. But, again, I don't want to act like it's going to happen because it's not. Uh, let's see. Do you think that Vampiro and Coen will be kept with the company? Um, no. <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, it's a possibility, but I would I would guess on the negative side. Uh, let's see. Jack Davis says, did Dustin Reynolds leave the WF on good terms? Not particularly. No. If so, now that the sale of WCW and WF is final, do you think they'll bring the Goldust character back and maybe the angle of him being behind GTV? Hey, maybe he'll be in the Battle Royal on uh, Sunday. Yeah. I would, you know, it's, I, I don't know what the decision-making process is. I would bet against it. I mean, as far as Goldust character, I don't see them going back to the Goldust character. As far as Dustin Runnels, I don't think they have any use for him. I don't think that they would take Dustin Runnels unless it's. But they, you know, you need. Well, they got enough guys. You know, cause you, you need about thirty, thirty-five guys just to have a TV show. But you know, I don't know that you need him. And they always have their own guys they can bring up. Yeah, they're not going to necessarily and, and plus, thirty or thirty-five WCW guys because right. I mean, and, anyone who watches WCW TV, I mean, lately there's just been guys showing up like Kid Romeo all the time. People aren't going to know where they came from. Well, and the other one also is is that they 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 also can line up some of the ECW guys like Tajiri, Guido, you know what I mean, good workers, mm-hmm. and send them over there. There's a spot for them. Yeah, and they're younger guys, so um, I think maybe that twenty four is the limit right now. Yeah. Let's see, if Stephen Bart, if Stephen Bart is kimchi, who will be doink at WrestleMania? Uh, Steve Kern, Matt Bourne. He'll get thrown out and do a run in in his other yeah. gimmick. Uh, let's see, Dave, do you ever think WF would own WCW? Um, you know, the last six months, sure. You know, I knew it was a possibility, but, um, you know, if you go back a year, no, no, never. Uh, do you have any idea what talent WF acquired in the WCW purchase? Um, we thought, you know, I, I mean, you know, basically, uh, 24 mid-card contracts is what they're picking up for now. Um, I mean, they have the, they, have the, they obviously have the ability to, to acquire any talent they want. And and with no real opposition, um, basically, they're you know anyone they want. The odds are you know they're either the guys are going to have the choice of either not wrestling at all, or wrestling under the WF's terms. There's no leverage. It's like if you go in there, and Vince McMahon offers, let's just say, Bill Goldberg, Bill Goldberg, good example, three hundred thousand dollars a year, which would be an insulting offer to Bill Goldberg, um, and and he just goes no. It's like okay. Uh, right. What's he going to do? See ya. So, yeah, it's like, okay, you know, I mean, there's nowhere for him to work. He can't make that money anywhere else. Actually, actually, he might be able to make that money in pride. Uh, for, for, um, but, but, again, that's probably a bad example. 
You know, Scott Snyder probably could go into Pride, although that would be a terrible idea. That would be but he probably could make some good money. Yeah. I, I guess if they, uh, they fed him some guys, but if we're going to be like... No, but I mean, I'm just saying the, 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 what they were doing. No, but the problem is the injury thing. Yeah. Uh, even if he could beat people, I mean, you know he's very injury prone. You know, you don't want to get in real fights. Not that, not that he's not a tough guy, because obviously he's a super, super tough guy, but, you know, he could get, you know... He, he just, I, I just sense that he would, winning or losing a fight like that uh, with a real fighter, uh, he, you know, I mean, between his back and everything, it's just not, a, it's not a good idea. Mm-hmm. We'll hopefully have Alex Marvez up as soon as the press conference concludes, and we'll maybe have some more answers and a lot more questions when that thing is over. Uh, let's see. Uh, now that the WF owns WCW, this is from Bill Zettler, and Vince is letting his son Shane run it, uh, which is. Not definite, but, I mean, figurehead what? It's going to be run by the World Wrestling Federation. It's not going to be like Shane McMahon running it, although I think from a television standpoint, that's probably how they'll try to portray it, because the idea is if Shane makes a go of it himself, you know, it'll be, people will accept him as, you know, like a real great promoter on his own right, rather than just Vince's son. The eventual um, replacement. And, well, it's going to be a three-way, you know, everyone says that, that the smartest, uh, you know, of the kids is Stephanie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've always heard that. I mean, so, and certainly in the last year, more than ever. Um, Shane, Stephanie, and uh, Marissa was, were the names that Vince said. I forgot. I don't even remember which show it was. He did those two shows yesterday. But I think it was Stern. It was Stern. Okay, we, we mentioned that they would be the ones who would, would run the company. Um, anyway, will he try to run it like WWF? Uh, I think that's pretty much a definite that they would follow the WWF formulas. Uh, let's see. Do you think Nash will come back as Diesel? No. Let's ask the question goes. this way. Do you think Nash will come back? I can tell you at the meeting, everybody was negative about him. Very negative. Now, that doesn't mean six months from now he won't be back. Mm-hmm. Um, they may... He put it this way. He will not be back at anywhere close to the money he's making. But, you know, he's got a no-cut deal for, uh, what is it, 16 more months? You know, now, I'll tell you what. Kevin Nash today... You know how, like, for all that time, Kevin Nash was sort of, like, you know, really happy that that deal was about to come up? You know what I mean? So he could play both sides against the other and get, you know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. I think now he probably wished that he'd resign an extension. You know, when you (laughs) think about it, how much time does he have left? 16 months, or what'd you say? Like, 15, I think 15 months. Okay, let's say he has 15 or 16 months left. And, uh, you know, Time Warner has to pay him unless, what, he offers to be bought out? Yeah, and why would he? Why would he? Why would he do that? He could, if he was smart, which he is, why not just sit on it for fifteen months, get your uh, thirty thousand a week or whatever, and by the time a uh, year and six months is up, it might be a situation where WWE goes, you know, maybe we could actually use this guy. No, and you know what else? Pretty quiet, and he hasn't caused any trouble for a year and six months. Because no one's seen. You know what else? Um, on that on that account is that um, right now. Because so many guys are coming in all at once, so to speak. You know, this whole crew's coming in. It's going to be hard for anyone to stand out above anyone else because there's so many. But in like 18 months, you know the nature of wrestling, you need to bring in new guys. Right, at certain right. times to shop. Right. Sitting on the sidelines, you know, if, if some of these guys that have money are smart, they should go and get their injuries fixed or just, you know, go to Japan for a while and kind of stay out of the mainstream and just kind of tell, if they're smart, a few of them, they should kind of go like, oh, you know, I want to spend some time with my family. And then six, to, six, years, six months to a year from now, someone's going to need to bring in new talent that can get over. I mean, as a main eventer. I mean, there's always going to be new talent, but new talent that can get over as a main eventer. And by being on the sidelines, uh, you may prove to be far more valuable than someone who's brought in in this big group of people being brought in right now. Yeah. It's an interesting strategy. And he may take that, and uh, if he does, and then he gets in. <laughs> what a... That I gotta will give him, uh, cement it once and for all. What a smart guy he will be. Uh, <laughs> let's see, he goes, I don't see WCW being built as an equal to WF, but rather a farm system with 24 mid-card contracts, a dozen ECW guys, and moving over guys like Gangrel, Kate Quick, and S.A. Rios. We don't know about those. And they may. I might. If they, okay, um, and a few top Memphis guys like the Mean Street Posse plus a Booker T and a DDP, they will have a nice farm team for the big time WF. What do you think? If they come across as the WFB team, um, they will not sell hardly any pay per views. They'll be in the same situation they're in now. 
Mm-hmm. And that's not a profitable situation. They've got to come across as a very vital... I mean, they don't have to be better than the WWF, but they have to be a very vital, exciting promotion that does not have a B-team stigma. B-team wrestling right now, especially if it's WWF B-team, uh, you know, there's, where's the, they're not going to be able to make money off of it. And then when they do the interpromotional, and everyone sees, it, it, you know, it doesn't make the B-team, you know, the B-team against the A-team, that's, that's not, um, that's no big deal. Yeah. That'd be like, you know... You, I mean, you, right you now, there's no reason for them to not create them and make them into an A-team. They I, own I it. That, it's their own business. Yep. Why would you bury a part of your own business or make part of your own business look like it's secondary to another part of your business? Uh, I cannot tell you any reason why, but I can sure point to Jim Crockett Promotions and Mid-South Sports in 1987 and say that I can give you a great precedent of that exact thing that you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a time when Jim Crockett Promotions needed revitalization in the main events. They bought a territory that had a lot of talent, and a great television network, and they brought the guys in and buried them. And he wouldn't let them get over, and most of them quit, you know, and um, they ended up, you know, gaining absolutely nothing from it. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the phone lines because we're jammed. Uh, let's start with Chris. Chris, what's up? And I want everyone t- tonight, um, try to let's, let's move these things along because I know that a lot of people are going to want to call up. Okay, Chris, you can grab first. Hi, how's it going? Hey. It's going really good. Uh, I just have a question about WrestleMania and then a question about the whole WCW deal. Um, okay. What are they going to do with pay-per-views? I mean, are they going to immediately produce the ones that are scheduled or are they just going to hold off until they have something established for a TV product? I don't know, but I would think that they're going to hold off. I, 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 there's no point in doing a, paper, a WCW pay-per-view until the WCW TV starts, and we don't know the date of his TV starting. And I would think that when the TV starts, they shouldn't do a pay-per-view for at least a couple of months. I wouldn't do it the first month. I don't know. Brian, what are, what are your thoughts? If, if I would hold off. I mean, yeah. they're certainly not doing May or anything like that, and then the, uh, the ones they've got planned, or the old WCW had planned. But you got to get TV and then do stuff, and I'd hold off. What, why is a TNN cold to having more wrestling? It's the only thing on their station that draws anything, anything, so why would they be against having another program? Because of the negative, stig- the negative stigma of wrestling. But don't they know firsthand that that's all, the only thing that's been holding their, their station together? I mean, you know what I mean? Well, it's, the high, it's by far the highest rated thing in the station. That's what I mean. Nothing, so I mean. nothing even comes close, but yeah. I don't think that they want to be the station. I mean, they, they've got uh, four hours a week of wrestling. I don't know that they want more hours. I mean, they just spent, what was it, a half a billion dollars or some, and that number could be way off. They spent a lot of money for the Star Trek rights and things like that. And that's, you know, for better or for worse, those, that kind of programming is what these networks want to build around. And they want to build around original programming. And wrestling is one of those things where everyone knows can, you know, it can draw ratings. But again, they, the, 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 the television, I mean, we've seen it. The television community is totally cold on wrestling right now. Okay. And uh, as last thing on the WCW thing, with Bischoff, is he, is he technically under WCW contract? Is just something about him being part of creative? The creative team or something? He's under a WCW contract, but this is not he's not one of the contracts that they're buying. <laughs> okay. So they have, they would never would they even consider using him as a TV figurehead, you know, just They might. They might. Um, that mean that I, don't, I don't know that he I don't, in one of, Yeah, I don't know that he would want to do it though. I think that Bischoff um you know, if Bischoff had his way, I'm sure he'd want to run his I, I don't think he'd want to sign a long term contract with but you don't know hey, you don't know. Maybe they'll I mean, finally you know, he, sign him as an announcer. <laughs> and humiliate That's him right. and Kelly. Uh, the uh, two things on WrestleMania, I'll try to keep it quick. Um, you were saying that they were looking to make Austin heel, right? Were they looking to do this at WrestleMania? Like have that was the plan, and it may still be the plan. But um, that was that was definitely the plan. Um, you know, before all this happened with uh, with Rock getting booed. Uh, but um, as far as I know, it's still the plan. Do you think that's smart, though? I mean, especially because it's in Texas, and I mean, he, how? I mean, you know what I mean? Do you think it'll be the smart. type of heat where they'll turn the fans off more than? The fans will want to come back and see somebody get their revenge on Austin. You think it'll be more of that? It, 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 it's certainly, what you just said is certainly something that has been brought up, at least to me, from people in the company. And it's certainly a concern. Uh, I, I don't know. Don't it's, I don't think it's, it's like it, the Hogan turn where it'll revive him because it's not like he needs to be revived. I mean, this is the type of thing where people are going to want to come back and see Rock get his I don't think, anyway. I think they're just going to be this more may be, This may be the... No, but, 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 it was a, but this actually worked, worked in money in, in going the 1985 Ric Flair turn against Dusty Rhodes, mm-hmm. where, where you know, it really resulted in a lot of people booing Dusty Rhodes and a lot of people cheering Ric Flair. Nevertheless, those matches drew tremendous business at that time. So, you know, they may be thinking along those lines. I mean, when they turn Austin, I think that, I think that many, many people are going to cheer Steve Austin. How yeah. many is that, whether that hurts at, at the gate? Or it freshens up at the gate. I guess we'll have to 
wait and see. Nobody can predict for sure. The only way to but, do that, though, would be to totally have him sell out to Vince. I mean, they can't keep really well, anything. That, that, that is the idea. Okay, because, I mean, they have to strip him of everything as far as the profanity, the, the, the beer, I think, because all that stuff is what they like about him, so I don't see them... You know, yeah, but if they strip him too much, then he's not Steve Austin. That's what I mean, but I, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't see them... I see them cheering Vince more than booing Austin, almost. Uh, I mean, I don't that's know. Just, that has been suggested too. Okay. Well, we're, you know, um, if, if, if everyone could predict the fans 100%, yeah, then everybody would right. be making a lot of money. Uh, uh, the last thing it's is hard. Okay, I just, I'm trying to make it quick this way. I don't keep it up. Um, the Triple H uh, Undertaker thing. Now, is tri- Triple H is supposed to go over in that match? I mean, it seems that way. I don't. That I don't know. Um, well, only because I mean, I would. I would think so. I would think know. so too. But lately, it's like the way they're booking it is like he's just been getting the best of Undertaker, and like Undertaker would get his revenge. But they got one more week to- though. That's true, too. I mean, they've done this before where, you know, the uh, heel just pummels him forever, and then last week, Babyface gets a couple things in, and then, you know, they do it. I think that's also one of the reasons, like, we've been getting a ton of emails, people going, how come they've never mentioned that Undertaker is undefeated at WrestleMania? And it's like, well, if they said that, it'd probably give away the finish. They, mentioned, <laughs> they did bring up that he never beat him. I mean, that was a little hint, I guess. When was it Undertaker? That, that, that yeah. Helms has never pinned Undertaker. Yeah. yeah. Well, they never really worked a program. Um, I guess I guess when Undertaker was babyface and Helms was lower on the card, they wrestled a lot. But yeah, not a lot. But I mean, I remember matches. The only I only remember one match, and that was a match I went to in Oakland, which I think it was like a no contest or a DQ, and it was not a bad match either. This one Undertaker was having good matches with anyone, and then him and Triple H had a good match. He'll probably have a decent match with him. I mean, he's smart enough to know what Undertaker can and can't do, and and tell a good enough story, I guess, you know, kind of like I think he'll have, I, I, I think he'll have a really good match with yeah. him. Yeah. But, uh, but I don't think it'll be the best match on the show. I don't know that card. I don't think so. There's too many other matches that look really good. So. You know, right, they're uh, going to have to have, you know, when we talk about this card, Yeah. they're going to have to have, for this card not to be good, they're going to have to have, like, everybody have a bad day at the same time. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, Okay, Rock and Austin are probably going to have a great match. Mm-hmm. Okay, but even if they don't, okay, you still got... Angle and Benoit, and I don't know how they won't have a great match at WrestleMania. I think that would probably be the best match. Just yeah, I mean, you got maybe a, a TLC yeah. that would just be fine. Well, 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 the one the, the the one thing with the Angle Benoit match is the crowd reaction. In that you know Benoit, you know they they never really figured out how to get Benoit over as a babyface. Mm-hmm. Although Angle Angle as a heel, you know, will get a reaction. You think that might be a submission match? Good. What you think that might be a submission match since they kind of it might be. It might be, yeah. Because, I mean, they might go with that whole Austin Brett thing where, you know, maybe he throws Benoit on the ankle lock and he doesn't tap, but he passes out. Maybe they'll go with that kind of strategy and hope that works. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, that's, that's a good idea, you know. I think it's been enough years because that was like WrestleMania four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, probably not that, like, it wasn't that soon, and I think it, it might work. I mean, Angle's probably strong enough as a heel to get somebody over that way. I mean, you know, I, I would assume so anyway. Yeah. And the last day, this popped in my head when I mentioned the TLC. Is that going to be a, a six man tag, three way, or are they just going to keep it as the tag? Nine, nine, really, yeah, nine. nine man tag, yeah. I've, I've certainly heard speculation. I think Jerry Lynn's a TV Monday, and the speculation is that you throw Jerry Lynn in there with the Hardys. Okay. So um, I guess we'll find out Monday. But um, I mean, if not, it, it would be those other three people interfering freely. Right. If they if they make this because I think they want it to be a tag team title so I think that it'll end up being the tag teams but but that, that those guys will all be getting involved in taking bumps through tables maybe yeah well Spike will be taking the bumps through the tables I don't know about Rhino yeah. <laughs> all right, right, uh, putting people through the tables call. okay thanks so much Chris let's go to Sean in the oh Alex is here okay we're gonna go to Alex and we'll probably keep Alex for a while Alex what's the news Dave how are you I'm fine. Brian there? Yep, I'm here. You're there, too. Hey, stop sending Rick Steiner after me, man. Jesus. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) uh, what's it called? So Linda McMahon held a conference call, um, and basically the deal is done. They have a binding contract. Um, Everything will be finalized as of next week. I have a whole bunch of things uh, to go over on it. One of the things they said is you can look already on Monday night. They're going to... We're going to do something, some sort of angle to... to, On uh, Raw or Nitro or both? I believe both. Um, okay. I'm pretty strong. They're, apparently, the production teams on both sides are talking, so there will be something. My guess would be that Shane shows up on WCW as the new that one. Is, you know what's really weird about this? Because they have that hour that, that, that goes head-to-head. Right. Would they go in there and, like, like do simulcast and go, like, oh, my God, there's Shane on in Panama City and, like, kind of do, like, a split feed where both shows are doing the same thing at the same time? I think that you run a risk there of I'm lowering. Just throwing out an idea. Well, you you lower the ratings for both. I mean, you could split your audience. And I you don't do it for the presidential press conferences. 
Well, I don't think Viacom. I don't think, I don't think Viacom's in the business of helping out Time Warner. <laughs> oh, you know. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true, even for one week. But ultimately, they're only helping themselves because they own the pro- They're going to own the property after this after Monday. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't know. I, I, that's that's pretty high up network wise, you know, to make a decision like that where you're showing. You know what I mean? Plus, it, it may not have a WWE. You know, I would think that the WWF wants to be in full command of what it is that they're doing. So would you figure they would just show Raw on on the final hour of Nitro? I don't know. I don't mean that. I would just, like, maybe have, like, a thing where Shane shows up and they and they show it on Raw, and they kind of would dilute their audience, but it's only for one week anyway. And then at the end of the show, you know, the end of the Nitro show, you kind of do something where, you know, you tell everyone this is to be continued on Raw. You know, like on TNN next week or something. You know, some because it's not going to be on the station anymore. Right. Or you do something at ten that night. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. You you never know. But I mean, the production teams are meeting. Um, I'm just going to go over this point by point, if that's okay. Sure. Um, basically, they're not going to deal with the purchase price. Uh, they're blaming that on AOL. They said they don't want to address that. Uh, contracts of wrestlers is what you guys have reported. Um, they're assuming some contracts and some they are not. Uh, they'll have an official rundown of that sometime next week. As far as their advertising contracts, there is no obligation to make good on any of the advertising that TBS and TNT promised for the ratings. So, okay. So they'll be discussing new advertising ratings. Yeah, because that would be TBS rated. Yeah, that would be TBS stuff. Right. Yeah. They're not assuming any of that. They're also not assuming any of the lawsuits um, as well. That is not okay. their problem. I, I wouldn't expect that they would, yeah. Right. Um What's him called? Apparently, uh, Stuart. Uh, what is his last name again? Snyder. Stuart Snyder. Yeah, Stuart Snyder. He was, I guess, close friends with Brad Siegel. Yes. From their days at Turner, so that's another thing that helps cement the deal. They became reinvolved three weeks ago with negotiations after it looked like the fusion thing was going to fall through. Um, they're talking about the quote potential opportunity of separate programming on TNN, but there's been no deal done. Uh, she was real vague as far as any sort of specifics on how WCW would be presented. Um, she said they're going to expand pay-per-view, but that isn't to say that they're going to expand WCW pay-per-view. Um, I'm not sure how that's exactly going to work. I don't know. I don't know if they are either, for that matter. They, they they didn't give any kind of indication as far as a start. You know, like after WCW closes on Monday, like okay, it will be dark for six weeks, three months. Mm-hmm. They didn't give any kind of indication of the time frame of when we will see them reemerge. Right, but apparently it's within a few weeks. Is what they're oh, really. Yeah, they're saying okay. in a few weeks that they hope to have something solidified and to get them back on. Okay, and, but it, would, it was almost for sure on TNN. It, it's got to be, but as we talked about earlier, I, uh, from what my impression is from the TNN people, they're not all too hot and heavy on assuming another primetime wrestling program um, on a Wednesday night um, or even for the long-term future because they have some other programming things that are coming up for them. Um, they've, they've paid half a million, half a billion dollars rather for the rights to Star Trek. They just purchased some, um, I guess, top-rate movies like Top Gun and stuff like that, and they seem to be trying to get away from that southern image of TNN, which does, you know, WCW still has that southern stigma. So I'm not all too sure where they're going to end up on the TNN dial. I think Wednesday, Friday, and late night are still the most viable spots for them. Yes, what else? Let's see. uh, Affecting WCW licensing. Apparently, WWF will have to assume some licensing deals that WCW has signed. Others um, are sort of in a gray area. Um, that's one of the things they're going to be doing next week, you know, as they, as they wind this whole thing up. Um, ask, I asked uh, Linda if there was any thought to shutting down WCW simply because it's just been on such a death track for so long. Um, she said, I quote, I think you have to put things in perspective. While the ratings have been a fair amount lower than ours, you have to look at cable programming in general. WCW draws a respectable rating. This is a brand that was built over many years. It's something that has great value for us. We do not want to fold it and put it in a drawer. I followed that up by asking her, what are some of the things that need to be done there? She said, quote, I'm certainly going to leave that up to the creative folks at first to get their arms around the storylines and what the driving factors in their weekly episodic drama are going to be. Clearly, we see an interest with WCW using the cross-brand to drive interest. Um, Cross-brand, so cross brand, that means that uh, guys going back and forth to me. Sounds like that to me, too, or building up to something, right? Well, obviously, they're building up to something. I'm, I mean, I think that that, that that would be... I don't want to say... There's many different ways of looking at it. I mean, you could do something right away and blow it off, or you could rebuild it, uh, you know, like steal guys back and forth, which actually I think would be the best way to do it, and then lead to a, you know, a big, you know, a big, big program when you finally do the program. Um, you know, but, but that's best held off as long as you can. 
Yeah. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely well, right. Well, especially, I mean, it's, it's best held off until the brand w- WCW is strong enough to where it can go and feud with WF and people would see it as competitive, which right now they shouldn't do it, and right now it's, you know, people wouldn't see it as competitive anyway. Well, well guys, I mean, who's going to be writing all this stuff? I mean, these WWF guys are strapped as it is. I think you see some of their stuff obviously works, some of their stuff doesn't. I mean, how are they going to be able to delegate this to, to rebuild? Well, they're going to have to, they're going to keep some of the office talent, I would think. You know, exactly. it could be the Terry, Terry Taylor, Johnny Ace. I mean, I'm just throwing names out. I don't know. I don't know either. Or maybe they've got, um, I mean, they'll, maybe they'll send some of the writers over. Split some of their own crew. Some of their own crew, yeah. Well, I mean, but I mean, we all admit that their crew is pretty overworked as it is. Oh, uh, everyone in everyone wrestling at that level is overworked. Because if you work for Titan Sports, you're driven really, really hard. It's it's almost like you know you, you have to be to make it there. And I mean, the one thing maybe it'd be something like you know you keep Johnny Ace and you take one of the writers they've got right now, and he would strictly be doing the WCW show and uh, just replace him with somebody else for the WWF crew. You know, one of the things it, 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 that that will be a positive is that the attitude in WCW was was always, you know, you kind of did your job, but you didn't go out of your way to do any more than you had to. And working in that company where everyone really works hard, I mean, it's just a super hard-working company, I think that that attitude, um, as far as in the management and the production and, all, and that side of it, um, that, that will improve WCW. Oh, I, I agree. I just wonder... It is such a Vince-driven product, the WWF, and the man is in Jermoss's ear through the entire show, as we all know, and he's got such a hands-on approach to this. Can he assume a second promotion and treat it the same way? And and you know what I mean? And have that same presence that he did, you know, that he does in the WWF. Um, I think he will, and he has to. Yeah. Uh, I, know. I, uh, yeah, I mean, the only thing... And what if Vince cool. jumped? Ooh. Well, it's a possibility, too. He would certainly be uh, at least attempting to put this over as an A company. Well, he has to put it over as an A company because if it's anything less than an A company, it can't make money. Yeah. A B company, a B company, he could make money with a B company in football. He's not going to make money with a B company in wrestling, which isn't as popular as football. Right. I just these next few weeks for him are just going to be insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, they they were going to be even without this. So you're right. Absolutely. We yeah. WrestleMania. This winding down the XFL season. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh boy. Down. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I guess they got. I mean, their big challenge is going to apparently come March 31st. Is that correct? That's the yeah. That's a, not this Saturday, but Saturday after, when it's uh, the final four. And they've got. Oh, to, oh, go, oh, come on! I mean, their big challenge, you know. Well, I mean, they got to do something to avoid getting a one. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, they got to come up with an angle. You're right. Yeah. But every you know, when we talk about that, though, every angle they've done has resulted in lower ratings because people don't want. That audience doesn't want angles. That audience doesn't... It's just not that audience. That's the problem. No, I agree. But yeah, you're right. You're right. That March 31st, that is going to be so tough for them. And it's the night before WrestleMania, so if they're ever going to do something where they bring in some uh, wrestling stuff, that'll be the day. It, it only makes sense. I mean, if you're, if you're yeah. going down in flames anyway, you may as well uh, go down in flames promoting your wrestling. Okay, day. that's the right thing. You send Rock and Austin there, but at, at the same time, everything that Vince has said, and granted... Whatever that means. <laughs> Who cares at this point, though? Yeah. No, but everything Vince has said is that we got to keep them, you know, we, they, the, the football audience doesn't want wrestling. But if he goes in there and does, you know, that thing as a, as a last-minute promo for WrestleMania, and I'm not even saying that's the wrong thing to do, because it, it's not. It is the right thing to do, but, boy, eh, whatever. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, mm-hmm. was, Linda was asked about an all-wrestling cable channel now that they have all this footage. She said it's not something in the immediate future, but it's something that they could look at down the road. Um, mm-hmm. I asked uh, Stewart about the timetable of the deal. Said it was approximately three and a half, three to three and a half weeks ago. They reengaged in the conversation. Said the first time that they spoke, the big things holding up the deal was the fact of the uh, exclusivity of the Viacom contract that would have prevented the WWF from appearing on WC, you know, on Turner programming. Sure. Um, and the second thing was just the economics of the deal made no sense to them at the time. So that's why they backed out. And at that point, well, the, they, the, the, the purchase price obviously is much lower now than it was a few months ago. Oh, it's got to be. I mean, they, you know, at this point in time, Warner just wanted to get rid of it. It was obvious. I mean, they yeah. just, you know, talking to, to some of the executives there on the non-wrestling side, they just grew tired of all the headaches that were that were involved in professional wrestling. 
I mean, it wasn't producing the ratings. The people were, were very difficult to deal with. It had become a complete headache, an embarrassment with the lawsuits, and it was, quite frankly, it was just losing way too much money, as you as you both have written about. So, you know, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's basically everything that was, was covered? Yeah, that was everything that's covered. I'll put up a transcript at WrestlingObserver.com. Uh, hopefully within an hour I have to write for a news service right now so uh, to get the wire story out. So I'm going to go ahead and okay. do that, and uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Okay, Alex, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. No problem. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, let's start going to phone calls. Sean, you're up now. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you? Hey, it's all the work, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, I, heard you I wish the next time they the next time they do a work, I hope they would like uh, they'll let me sleep though during the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering uh, as far as the TV shows go, like if they do get on TNT or whatever, how, how many do you know? Is there gonna be two or is there gonna be one show? I mean, is that even WCW? It, it, they would, oh, they're yeah. only gonna get one show, that's for sure. Okay, and you know, as far as like Steiner goes, and he says that you know they're not too hot on Steiner. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, all the main eventers are like damaged goods, but. I think out of all of them, I think that he's like the one, the one that's not. You know, I think the fans still look at him as like, you know what I'm saying? It's not so much the TV stuff; it's the off TV. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think you know. I think that they're really adamant about two things, and they got to be okay. I mean, there's there's guys there. I mean, because I, and I've talked to people in the company in that company about this. You know, we talk about say just as a, just as the name I'm throwing out is, is O'Hare because it's the name you know everybody knows. These you know guy with potential. And I think that there, the feeling in WWF is is that a guy like Sean O'Hare, because of who his role models have been in wrestling as far as who the main eventers are in the company and what you learn from, has gotten a terrible upbringing as far as how you act as a wrestler in and out of the ring. And I think that they do not want that element in their company because they don't have it on the WWF side. They would get rid of it. And I think all of those guys that are negative dressing room influences or what they perceive as wrestling, negative dressing room influences, they will not touch um, and it has nothing to do with whether they're marketable or not. Uh, their feeling is is they can make stars, and they, and if they need to send someone over and cross over, they can. They need. If you don't want to, and, and and I think that you know Scott Steiner, hey Scott Steiner, more than once on live television went into business for himself, and it's the kind of a guy that they just don't want around because if he does it a third time, great, they can fire him, but they don't want it on their TV. What what does this do for uh, Rob Van Dam? Nothing. <laughs> no, I mean, is, he, is this pretty much like X him out of North America or what? Um, if he if he humbles himself and asks for a job, um, you know, I don't know that they'd be 100% against putting him in the WCW side. But as far as um, going in there with any leverage whatsoever, he's got zero. As far as going in there without, a poly, you know, like, you know, it, 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 it makes it much, much tougher on him. I mean, there's so many guys... Um, you know, every guy who we're talking about on the outside kind of waiting, you know, Jerry Lawler, uh, those kind of guys, boy, it's, it's, this is a real bad thing for them. What is Rob's uh, relationship with uh, Paul? Is it good or? Personally with Paul, it's very good. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, what about, uh, like Sheldon Benjamin and, you know, all those big guys? I mean, are we going to see them on television now or? Uh, hopefully not because they're not ready. And I think, the, I think they'll be smart enough to know not to, uh, rush those guys onto, uh, national television, wait until they're ready. And, you know. I mean, it probably gives more spots for a guy like that. Um, you know, they could start him in a WCW as opposed to a WWF if, if need be um, when he's when he's ready. Um, you know, I think that probably Scott Vick and some of those guys may wind up on that WCW side because they've been Scott Vick, Steve Bradley. They've been wanting to bring him in. It's just that that WWF roster has been all full. So, you know, those guys may have an opportunity to get on that side. I'm just this, and I'm I'm just speculating. I don't know any of this. No one's said anything to me about about that much. Hey, what do you think about of, uh, at WrestleMania, the Vince Shane, whoever, like, you know, like some stipulation, like, you know, loser has to leave WWF. Loser gets the other company would not work. All right, guys. Well, hey, Brian. Yeah. Last week's figure four, quality. The part about Benoit when he missed the spot. Oh. <laughs> you almost killed me, man. Thanks, man. And, hey, uh, good job, guys. And, hey, the new player, totally sucks. But have a good week. Actually, Al, tell them, tell them what the deal is on that, because I've, we've gotten a couple of emails about that, and there's there's ways to do it that it actually works just as well, right? Yeah, What's the story, Al? If, uh, basically, and I know I'm going to get inundated with about 100 emails, send me your, send me an email, or your email address, actually, to alg at eyata.com. What I'll do is I'll send you a thing, oh, and boy. I'll allow you to, <laughs> I know I'm going to get 8,000 emails, but whatever. Uh, I will send you a thing that will allow you to adjust your player, uh, so that you can hear it a little bit better. If you're using AOL, the biggest problem with AOL is its bandwidth, especially now because we're in prime time, or even during archive stuff, there's a lot of people trying to get on AOL. 
you're going to have problems with it. Use the real audio player for now. Uh, if the Windows Media Player is not working, you can download it for free at IATA. There's a, a clickable link. You go to the uh, real page, and you'll be able to download it for yourself. So uh, that, that's the best I can do right now, and I'll send you a little. I can send you out a little thing that tells you how to adjust your player preferences and stuff. Jeff Merrick, we have on the line, and uh, Tom Zenk called me a few moments ago. He'd like to come on as well. I'm going to call him right now. Okay. Well, what a show. What a show we're having tonight. Jeff, how are you? Hey, hey, Brian. What's going on, guys? Hey. Did I miss anything today? Oh, no. <laughs> you been in meetings, Mr. News? <laughs> no, I got all of it. I've been on the phone, actually, all afternoon trying to sort this out from a Canadian perspective. Everyone here is, I mean, even at the, the syndicate end with the rights holders for WCW, I mean, I had people from their office calling me all day saying, what's going on? WCW, you know, uh, people in Atlanta said they're not going to call them until Monday at 12.15. I'm still <laughs> reading about it on the Internet. Yeah. Well, that's typical WCW, and all, you know, I mean, I don't know if, what, if you've talked to WCW. I know I've not talked to any WCW wrestlers today, but I did yesterday talk to a few. I talked to and I mean, you know, I mean, you know that everything that they know is the stuff from the, that's up on the Internet. But well, they've been calling us for the last two weeks. What's going on? All they know is they're supposed to show up for a show on Monday. They haven't been yeah. told anything. Well, whatever was going to go on, I, you know, I, I don't even have any idea what they're going to do for a show because i got to think WWE is going to rewrite everything that was planned anyway. I would imagine so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, do you know if Scott Steiner is going to be there? I have no idea. And, and, and now, with less of an idea than before. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, um... See, what, I, what I've heard... We're pretty sure about Nash, though. What? Yeah, I don't think Nash is going to be there. I don't think Nash is going to be there. I have no idea about Goldberg. Um, certainly no Hulk Hogan. I don't think... I don't know that Eric Bischoff's going to be there. I would... I would... You know, I would guess no. I don't think there's going to be any of those guys there. No Sting. I think it's all going to be the guys that Vince wants. You know, the, the Ric Flair's and the Booker T's. Those kind of guys. Yeah. You know, but now the thing is, 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 I think guys should know, though, that if they're asked to be there, they better be there or they're burning a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's see who shows up late. Let's see if anyone has enough guts to have a drink that afternoon at the bar. Uh, yeah, that's the one thing. Hey, you know, the one thing about that is if this thing hadn't been announced like this, it, they, those guys would have all been loaded on TV. And now oh, I think yeah. that, you know, and you know what, nobody, no, into, nobody could afford that now. And guys would have gone into business for themselves in the ring with other wrestlers. I mean, that's well, the we problem. Just, Come on now. I, I heard a couple. I heard. A, I mean, just like Rick Steiner and Conan last week. I heard a few more names in the last. Oh boy, <laughs> the Rick Steiner <laughs> hit squad. <laughs> hit, yeah, exactly. Every week, Lash Larue, Vito, Conan. <laughs> there were some agents this week, Dave, that were talking about hitting the ring. Oh yeah, Fit Finley. That's right. <laughs> the oh guys. yeah, that's they right. I did hear about that one. Yeah. We have now officially enough emails to last us. Until next year's WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we've got uh, Tom Zink on the phone. We also have uh, Jeff Merrick here of Live Audio Wrestling. Brian Alvarez, of course, of uh, Figure Four Weekly. Tom, what's going on? My three favorite guys, Jeff Merrick, Dave <laughs> Meltzer, and Brian. How are you, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> My God, Brian, if I had a grandson, I'd want one like that. <laughs> <laughs> You've really got a pulse on the business, my <laughs> sure you saw Oh, that's coming. Good. That Houston deal, I think they're just some dirty, rotten scoundrels there with that Eric Bischoff. I never liked him. <laughs> How are you, fellas? Uh, what are you doing? It's Friday night. What's going on? What's going on, eh? It's the end of wrestling as we know it. Oh, my God. You don't want to wish too much what you want for. Vince finally got the ball. We got one target now, right? Yeah, Vince, Vince got it. Vince yeah, got it after, gonna... after uh, 19 years of, of wanting it. He's got it. You got it. And Never now we got we got one wrestling company, right? One I significant think. wrestling company. What do you think the about it, Jeff? Lose. The wrestlers lose, the fans lose. There's one style of product. That's it. That's right. And that's, that's the other thing. thing. It's just going to be one. That, that's the other thing. It's going to be one style of product. It's yep. not going to be like like it's not like. I, I, you know, I mean, it's not like WCW is going to be in there doing like a more this oriented or that oriented. I mean, they're going to be doing this oriented. <laughs> this, this, not this. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they already did a disoriented product for the last two and a half years. Who did you have on the other day? Was it Mike Mooneyham, some guy from the South? Yes. Okay. I was listening, and what Vince doesn't understand, I believe, is the Southern culture. How wrestling was in the Carolinas. Do you under right? Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, but I, I think that they, you know, I, I mean, I think that their feeling is is that that audience is is gone and has been replaced by their audience. If you know what I mean. Ooh, I mean, you understand? I don't think he cares. Oh, I mean, sure, he because you know he because because you know in the old days, you know when when you yeah. were 
within yeah. the territorial days. Sure. Every territory had its own style. I mean, mm-hmm. like, you know, when you wrestled in Oregon, it was a little bit different than wrestling for Vern. Sure. But the whole thing was when when Vince came in, everybody ended up doing the Vince style. They didn't, they didn't go to Portland and do a Portland style. But what I'm saying is, couldn't you uh, kind of build the card and not insult Flair and some of the people aren't and certain things, build them up and then just switch the card when you go above the Mason-Dixon line? Well, as far as like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that they're planning on actually touring with WCW. I think it's just producing oh. a television show. Oh, really? And, and pay per views. How, how long of a plan do you think they have for the well, plan? Being that they just started all this, started formulating everything really yesterday, I yeah. think that they're everything's pretty vague. Um, and you know, as far as like long term, sure. they got that idea that they're going to keep it separate for a year, then do the interpromotional. But a year, you know, a year could be three months, and a year could be f- five years. You know, I mean, it's like yeah. you know, the, the marketplace is going to determine how this really turns out. Well, you know, the numbers that WWF turn in after WrestleMania. I mean, if the WWF starts to dip, you know, even lower on television. The temptation to do the interpromotional right away is going to be pretty strong. Sure. Yeah. I think they'll try and um, they'll just try and have guys switch back and forth first, see what that does before actually going all out and doing a pay per view with you know WWF guys versus WCW guys. You know what? Plus, I think a lot a lot's going to depend on how they open on TNN with w, when it, whatever time slot the WCW show gets because if they go in with say the WCW show and they open with say a one seven. Or they open with a three zero. I think the mentality will be altogether different. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Depending on you know, because because if they open it at one seven, they'll they'll panic right away. If they open it at three zero, they'll go, oh, we got some leeway. We can, you know, we can do everything really slow and and, and you know and and we we got it under control. Wouldn't it be pretty clever though to have Vince? I think you said it, Dave, to have him go on WCW TV show up in Panama City, and you know, I mean, he could he could name Nash and you know. Uh, Scott Hall that walked out on him or payback. I mean, couldn't he be like the dark side of Vince McMahon or be that rotten character that he everyone already is. hates? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, you know, I mean, he's a natural at it. Oh, he's the best. Well, exactly. And, uh, so put the de- man, the devil in the suit. So put him <laughs> on TV, and it's payback for the WCW guys that left him because everyone, Hogan, all those guys trashed him when they worked for you know Deep Pockets, Ted Turner. So they could really be ribbon on the square, so to speak, and really have some fun with it and run for two years. But is that going to drive money, though? I mean, at the end of the day, it just has to make business sense. Well, well I know I mean, it, too, it, but... It, it, it can satisfy Vince's ego to go out there and blast all those guys. I mean, just not for, sh- for shock value. And then, then couldn't you blend it with the South, the different stars, and work interpromotional angles, kind of, and tweak it, so to speak? You know what well, I'm saying? Well, eventually, that's, I'm sure eventually that's where, where it's going to end up. Because they could really have a good run with this now. Does this whole thing just scream Shane McMahon to you guys? Like this whole thing is all about grooming Shane. Ooh, McMahon spot. This whole good thing point. says Shane McMahon to me. Ooh. Well, you know the it. thing for for over a year. I mean, there were there was talk at various times of them buying ECW when ECW actually meant something, or That's buying right. UFC when UFC meant something, and give it to Shane. They were because good. I mean, the whole idea is is I think that they wanted to give Shane. A company to run and to turn around, so people respect Shane as something other than we said this before, something other oh. than just the son of Vince McMahon. Yeah. And then when the day comes for him to run WWF, he's got this track record of being successful in other businesses rather than just Vince gave it to his kid. And his, what's his kid ever done other than like you know like you know like been you know like been there with his dad, and, but nothing, done nothing on his own. So I think Maybe that Shane take out a big loan. Tell him he couldn't miss a payment. <laughs> <laughs> you sick. Oh, my God, Brian. Oh, Fabu, my boy. That was cute. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, I mean, look what we've seen at other wrestlers' sons, okay? They had, the daddies had big boots to fill, and they couldn't measure up, right? Yeah, that, exactly. That. That's, that's, that's why he, he probably kind of needs to do something on his own. I think we're talking about respect. The kid needs to get respect and right. Make his own yeah, because, you know, like, with, with, with a lot of the wrestlers, you know, that were, like, the sons of a promoter. Yeah. The only way they ever got respect in the business is by leaving their home territory and actually becoming stars where their dad didn't give them the break. If they always stayed in their home territory, yeah. even if they were stars because their dad made them stars, they never had that same respect. That's Absolutely. right. She, Dave, Dave got to cut Shane McMahon's umbilical cord here. Absolutely. I think this, is, this, this whole thing is all about is cutting the umbilical cord for Shane McMahon. Yeah. Make it on your own, kid. Sink or swim. And the best well, thing to do is throw him in off the deep end into the sharks, and there's yeah, sharks the, down there. Yeah, but uh, they, they can't let him fail now. either, though. Yeah, they can't they, fail. They, huh? Yeah, they can't let him fail. No, 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 no. Uh, no, they won't. No, they have their own policemen, don't they? 
I mean, yeah. respect. I mean, they went out of control in WCW, but that was there from a long time ago. I think they just had deep pockets and they took advantage. Certain people manipulated and didn't do the right thing with certain guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, everybody was trying to protect their spots because they were all making more money than they'd ever made in their lives. That's right. And they just wanted it to go on forever. And, uh, you know, in wrestling, the problem is is that nothing is forever. No. And, 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 as soon as, and as soon as, you know, guys start manipulating things to be forever, you know, Stanless, Stanless comes in and... <laughs> all down here. Well, yeah. well it, and it doesn't take long. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. What do you think... Uh, what do you think... Uh, well, what do you think this is all going to become now? I mean, how many guys... What about the young guys in WCW? I think they're all going to... I think the young guys that work hard, yeah. I think they're all going to get a chance. Because the uh, Some of the smaller like ones, it's going to be tough. Because mm -hmm. they don't really like smaller guys. But, 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 um, strength, but if they're in a group with a whole bunch of smaller guys, they'll be okay. Well, we, okay, well, if you're right. The majority right, of the contract, that, 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 24 the, contracts and there's 22 little guys, they'll be fine. That, uh, yeah, but they, you, you got to figure out the mentality. Are they willing to take that mentality that okay, you know, we'll make this, you know, we'll make this kind of like the smaller guys promotion. But if they're all smaller guys, people won't think of it as a smaller guys promotion. Kind of like the whole thing of of Rhino. Everybody thought of Rhino as a big guy, and now all of a sudden it's like, whoa, you know what I mean? It, it's, you know, if you if you had Rhino in that other side, you know, he could be a big monster at you know whatever he is five eleven, but you know, kind of thick. Yeah. Mm. Or even shorter. I don't know what he what he really what what, what is he really, Jeff? I think he he's five. Me. I think he's five ten. Okay. So how tall is Christian? Six. I think he's six even. So yeah. Really? Because I didn't think he was that tall. I guess because Adam Copeland's deceptively tall because of all those big guys in WWE. You don't really realize it. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting you mentioned those two guys. Uh, we did the uh, off the record taping with Jericho, Val, Christian, and Edge last week, and they were all going on about how this would be the worst thing that could ever happen to the business, and they'd have no leverage. And <laughs> the guys that have gone out there and said that are really hanging themselves now. Be well, interesting to see if that makes the air. Oh, you know the other thing too is is in the last couple of years. Because of the internet and everything, um, the voices of wrestlers have been heard louder than ever before, and I just got a feeling that um, nobody is going to say anything. I don't say, you know, except for like the veterans that know that they're they're over, you know, like. But but I mean I'm, I mean I'm not over in the in the sense of the business, but over as far as like that their career is basically over. You know, like a bad news Allen or Tom here. Yeah. You know, but but like you know, as far as like these guys, like just throw a name, like uh, Chris Jericho. I mean, I think all those kind of guys, you know, I don't think that they're going to, I think they're going to end up being a lot more careful well, about what they say. Well, guys, that's already started. It's, oh, no, it's, it's always been that way, but these WCW guys, no, I mean, wide open. my God, you know, you know what those guys would say. They're going to, the first guy who gets out remember of line and... and we, remember that show we did from Nitro, and there were guys on here burying the company? Yeah, everyone was. And they had to later in the evening. Everyone came on one after the other burying the company. I was stunned. I mean, they were more, I mean, I, I didn't expect guys to be that honest. I mean, so... I mean, there's being honest and there's being stupid, and we'd have the same thing on our show, guys from WCW, every week, week in, week out, coming and just crabbing about everything. And we all know the politics in the World Wrestling Federation were at least similar, if not the same, but, I mean, they all had, you know, the Vince speak going, and it all towed the company line. It's not as honest and doesn't make for as compelling radio and isn't really as interesting, but it's a lot better for business. Well, it's a lot better for, the, for their, their business. For their business, that's what I mean. Yeah, because you've got to survive in that WWF thing, and... um you know, every you know every wrestler is under their thumb now. I mean, he's not. Boy, when those, when when this group of guys uh, contracts are up and it comes time to renegotiate, I mean, it's like <laughs> you know, I mean, those downsides they're going to be tough. It's going to be it's going to be back to you know how Vince always paid in the in the eighties, which is sort of like you know, I mean, you get paid basically what uh, what they want to pay you. Well, you got that right. It's going to be a big reality check. But see, DDP will be back with all his buddies, Chris Jer or Jericho, everyone that he helped, right? You know, can you imagine all that BS that he spread around in Bagwell? Where are they going to go? They're going to go, they'll eat him alive. And Bagwell, the guy, yeah. the Bag Bagwell, Bagwell did not make a lot of good moves in the last no. uh, eight days. Talk about Boy, two, two weeks. weeks. Shane McMahon was all over Buff Bagel. He wanted Buff Bagel. He's got charisma. He's got the look. He can do it. But I'll tell you, in the last three to four months, his stock has just you know dropped like high tech stock. Really? Well, well, well ba you know, Bagel. I mean, Bagel's when his you know when his contract was was going to be up on March first. Yeah. I mean, he went. I mean, he sent feelers out to WWF. Hey, you know, you can get me. Well, and I mean, they right. were, they were cold. Yeah. You know, they didn't want him. I think, and, I and I think now they want him even less. 
Exactly. They'll make an example out of it. It's a different game up there. But I saw it in 87, and then Flair went there, Dusty. They, it's a, yeah, it's, you're right. You just tore the mark there. You can't get to Vince. It's a totally different game. What about the guys that sent out the feelers and, you know, flirted with the WWF, but then ultimately chose WCW because they couldn't, you know, resist that kind of money at the DDP? They paid the a price. There. What happens to those guys now? Nothing. Uh, that they, yeah, you know, I think, think it all depends. It depends, like, you know, it depends on who they are. Up. What's Depends that? on who they are, what their attitude is, how charming they can be. It's typical wrestling. Don't, don't there are going to be guys, there are going to be a lot of big-name guys that they don't take. I mean, and not, not just like, like Lubers and stuff. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to those guys. I mean, I'm sure somebody will be sitting on the sidelines and try to start something up, but, but uh, the TV situation, and that's the one thing that people don't realize, the TV situation is incredibly difficult right now compared to even what it would have been a year ago. That right. whole wrestling stigma is a it's a like a, it's black a killer guy. and and Heyman saw it and Bischoff saw it both when they tried to uh, you know get something going. I mean they they couldn't get nothing. Yeah, I mean the, the feeling, the general sentiment around the TV community is that the fad is over, you know, and Vince is, is the only one that's going to be you know moderately successful in TV's eyes. It's like you know the Pokemon of two years ago. Mm. Yeah, talking to TV executives, that's what it looks like to them. So wrestling has got a ba- black eye, huh? You know, it always did. Not good product, though. I mean, no, now they're jumping on the bandwagon. Well, it, it, it always had the black eye, but you yeah. know what it always had before that it they doesn't have now? Yeah. I mean, no, but no, wrestling always had ratings, though. Yeah. Okay, you know, I mean, you know, now the ratings are higher than they've been in other periods of time. But the other thing is, is that now wrestling, you know, wrestling used to be cheaply produced programming, and now to keep pace, it's not cheaply produced. I mean, that's what killed the, you know, those big losses. On the Turner side, because of how much money they were spending producing that TV show, that they weren't recouping on advertising anymore. You know, before, you know, if you produced, you know, like that old studio stuff in Georgia Championship yeah. Wrestling, it's like all that ad money you could make was all gravy. Now it's like the ad money is paying for your pyro and this and that and your video wall. And I mean, or at least use that TV to make some money off of pay per view. They weren't even doing that. <laughs> Well, that, that is really, different. That really problem. is the barrier to entry. The, the way that Vince produces his television and the amount of money that he spends on it is the barrier to entry. For anyone else yeah. that wants to get involved, because anybody else is going to look so pale. Yeah, they look like geeks compared to Vince. It's, it's like, you know, kindergarten. It's like the XFL compared to the NFL. Right, and, and, yeah. and, and that's a good analogy. And one, yeah. of, and one of the things of, of, the, of that is, you know, again, football so much more popular than wrestling. Yep. And the XFL is struggling, to say the least, and that's giving them the benefit of the doubt. So if a secondary wrestling company were to come along, and that's why Vince has to make this WCW. I mean... He's going to have to put money into this WCW as far as the production because it's got to be up to WF standards for production. Yep. And and he's got to get that that's the storylines going, or this could be you know that 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 division could be a big drain on him at a time when he's already got the other money drain in the XFL. Yep. Is, do you guys think it's going to be Vince's exit strategy for the XFL? Sure it is. You damn right. It should be. It yeah. Should be. But I mean, Vince really wants to hang his hat on you know the X, I'm going to make it in mainstream. No. It'll be forgotten. He's looking for an excuse right now. He's burying the media at Ventura. It's been in the papers in Minneapolis here. Oh, yeah, he's clever. Vince is the best I've ever seen. Vince is very good. <laughs> Dave knows that. He's the best. I saw that neck brace in court. He's the best. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I still want a picture of it. I didn't get it for Christmas. Vince is the best. And now we'll see what he's made of here. You darn right. He's the best. He's going to, that XFL is garbage. I turned on last week, and I don't mean to Bogart at the time, but I turned on girls' high school basketball. The XFL was that bad. Oh. Yeah. That's how bad. And it wasn't for the bodies either. It was bad. The XFL was terrible. You know, we have to say that girls' college basketball. That what is St. Girls- Patrick's Day. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? We're gonna, well, let's, let's, let's go hit a break right now. And Al, Al can, we, can we take phone calls with, with all these guys, too? Sure. It's going to be a little tough for them to hear. But also, uh, by the way, just in case anybody wants to know, there are a number of uh, callers for you, Dave, who are calling the Dan and Scott show, thinking that you're on Dan and Scott. And, well, Dan and Scott are doing a bang-up job answering the <laughs> wrestling questions. <laughs> it's lots of, that uh, apparently, surprised me. Well, apparently Dan on the show has uh, already told somebody that Hogan is coming back. Um, let's see what else. Vince is, ending it, Vince is ending it all on September 15th. That's confirmed. And I'm supposedly getting Hulk Hogan on the phone as we speak on Dan and Scott's show. So. Oh, they're having fun. Yes, they are. Get them anyway, They can get some uh, of the WCW guys in that gimmick battle royal. <laughs> Kevin Nash. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Colta. 
Yeah, yeah. Gold, they could get gold dust now. That's right. They could get gold dust. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh. uh, I'm going to start running through calls as quick as we can. Let's go to... Uh, it, is, uh, who's the first one up? Is it going to be Tony? Yeah, it'll be Tony. But by the way, uh, for those of you who aren't listening to the Dan and Scott show but want to, uh, Dan has been mentioning right now that Baron Von Raske is fighting The Rock in WrestleMania. So, <laughs> well, Baron Von Raske was. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Tom knows who Baron Von Raske was. He runs a and gift is. shop up north. In Minneapolis, in, right? No, in Minnesota, somewhere up north. Uh, a guy that I work with sees him every summer up by Bemidji or something. Uh, he runs a little gift shop and he signs autographs and... You know, knickknacks, and he's got a couple of kids. Real nice guy. I mean, yeah, Baron the Claw. That's he was the guy who used to script all of Nick Bockwinkel's promos. You guys know that? Pardon? Did you guys know he used to script Nick Bockwinkel's promos? No. I yeah. never knew that. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yep. Wow. Huh. Boy. Okay, anyway. Tony. Hello, guys. Hey, hey Tony. Tony. Can I ask you, is there any chance that this acquisition will open the door for... David Crockett to re-enter the scene as the lead announcer for WCW. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely. Not. I wonder what they're going to do with announcers. You know, they they have not discussed announcers yet, which would be interesting. But uh, it's a lot of nervous announcers right now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Joey Styles end up there. Really? Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. How about Stevie Ray? No, Stevie Ray. Not good. Not or a good chance. renegotiate his contract. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who played Oklahoma. You will well, he Ed be Ferrara? picked up? Ed, Ed no. Ferrara will. Well, you know what? You know, I would think no. But I, you don't know. They, they need writers. Ferrara. What? Both those guys, Russo and Ferrara, left with tons of heat. Yeah, well, well Russo. Russo uh, Russo's in a lot. Russo's because Russo opened his mouth and did all his interviews like immediately afterwards and throughout his whole tenure. And Ed Ferrara just sat back and wrote his TV. Joke by yeah. association. Except for the uh, Jim Ross deal. Ah, that was not a smart move, now was it? Oh, that Oklahoma character. Boy, oh boy, you're right. Can't they just turn the cheek? They could. <laughs> they don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, wrestling. No. Nothing means nothing, right? It's entertainment. Uh, yeah, yeah no but they, those, uh, people take it seriously. JR oh. made comments in his uh, reports. I don't think he liked it. Uh, how about Jim Ross, sure. that poor guy, and Vince even bashed him. If they were looking for football announcers, why didn't he hire him? I mean, he's so uh, correct after the fact, right? Well, I yeah. just saw something that was written on the Internet, and browbeating Jim Ross. Like, what? Yeah, that well, poor guy. He needs uh, a scapegoat. He needs someone yeah. to get on. That's why, yeah, that's, j- j- that's why yeah, I'm saying it's a perfect segue to dump the XFL, and then he's got wrestling. He's got more on his plate. That's what I think he'd do. I think that that's what he should do. That's what he should do. Yeah, of course. I cannot that's... see a second season. No. There's no point. They're not going to be on it. No, no, there's, no, there's no point. And uh, it's a great way to get out and just say, look, I've got so much on my plate. And you know what? And he does. Yep. It's not like if he tries to run all three companies, I mean, why would he want to torture himself like that? He's got all that money. He's killing I mean, his I, I know he says he loves work, but you know, there comes a point where when you never sleep and all you do is work, even if you like your work, it's yep. not really, it's, it's not just being fun. Dave, did you listen to the yes. entire interview that he did on uh, WFAN yesterday? I didn't listen to the entire interview. I listened to segments of I listened to the Mushnick thing. Which right. Was, yeah. Because if you listen to that, they're definitely going to be back. And he said, with or oh, without... Oh, I know he was talking N- like they were definitely going to be back. They, they're, they're having expansion meetings now. With or without NBC. Yeah, but what yeah. if Vince had his fingers crossed? That works in his world. <laughs> 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 it's like Elizabeth and Macho Man. No, they're not made. They're characters. What? It's a human <laughs> cartoon. So yeah. he's got different set of rules. You know? Well, the thing is, though, is that everything that he's going to do, I mean, he can't go in there and say, you know, we're debating shutting it down after this season. I mean, he'll, he'll, it's like any company. To the bitter end, you say that everything's great. That's right. Look, wrestlers yeah. a lot of been told in FCW. This thing's over. No one's been called. Well, I got one storyline for this new merger. What is it? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Tom just mentioned Macho Man and Elizabeth. And you guys have always said that everything that happens has happened in the past. So I'd like to see, it's a reenactment partially of a, one of my favorite storylines growing up, and that was with Ric Flair and the Macho Man. Ric Flair comes out, and we find out ever? that he had an affair with Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. This starts to fuse oh, with Triple God. H. That's great. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. But then... 
Then we find out... He might, though. He might for Rick. Rick is his hero. you got to yep. remember, childhood yeah, heroes mean true. something. Yep. But it, we then find out he also, years ago, had one with Linda. Oh, oh, oh! This is and then oh. we take it a step further, and oh. we find out that Shane is really Ric Flair's son and not Vince's son. How so about you've got all these built in and views. Flair's daughter? Oh... Well, so daughter, that there you go. Russo's idea, right? Oh. That's right, because they so went at it. Stacey Keebler was going to be Flair's daughter, yeah. I like yeah, it. That was Russo's idea. Was it? Yeah, yeah Stacey, Ke Stacey Keebler, when, the reason that the Dave, that, that Rick, that the, the whole thing was is that, yeah, Rick would end up being, um, what was it? Rick was going to end up being Stacey's mother, father, God, I'm losing my mind, yeah. because of an affair that he had in Baltimore, because Stacey really was from Baltimore, and Rick, you know, was a big party in Baltimore way back 21 years ago. Yes. And then the idea was that, um, that Russo would have been the father of Stacey's baby. How about just two guys that want the heavyweight title? <laughs> <laughs> That's no. so passe, though. Yeah, they, they need a little sickness for WWE. That twisted, yeah, you had it the first time, yeah. They need that sickness in there. I think. You know. Okay, let's 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 run to Hector. Hector, what's up? Hector. Hello. Hector's not. Hector. Man, there we go. Vincent Shane and WrestleMania, while well, they're fighting each other. We missed what about, the first we, half. Huh? We missed what you said. Start over. Oh no. Um, what, what do you think of Rick and David Flair laughing at Vincent Shane while they're fighting each other in WrestleMania, just sitting? David Flair. I don't think much of David Flair. Huh? I don't think much of David Flair. I don't think they'll do anything with David Flair. Like the McMahon yeah. versus the Flair at one point. And no, then that, they no. can do that. They can do Vince versus Never Flair without David. No. What about no, McMahon? No, no. Vince, Vince, Vince doesn't need to get in the ring with David Flair, at least not for a couple of years. No, you don't want to kill the business. What about <laughs> Flair going around recruiting people that, that, that they could do for before they start WCW? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. They can I think they sure. really need to have Flair have a major role. I got a question for Sink. Um, are you thinking of going to the gaming Battle Royal? Uh, uh, WrestleMania? I, I wonder if... I don't think that he's going to be high on their list of invitees for some reason. <laughs> Never. They could have the Red Rooster now. and They could get the Red Rooster. Uh, they, 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 could, they really they could. could have Shock, or I guess... Uh, they, got, who they, got, they got Shockmaster. They got there. Shockmaster, but they got him as a typhoon. They can keep performing a half uh, in the intermission or something. It's like yeah. the past is a past. I can put it aside, but I don't think they. Uh, there's probably hard feelings, and you know that's too bad. They could have bad WCW gimmicks in there now as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh God, God, there's so many of those now. Battle. That's right. They own the they own the rights of all those bad gimmicks. Huh? Oh, they yeah. can have Kevin Nash come in as Oz. Yep. Yeah. Really that's have right. some fun, Brian. You're a sick man. <laughs> do you think <laughs> um, Paul is going to make Mike Johnson do a whole mess of jobs now to the ECW guys? What? what? Um, Polly will make Mike Awesome do jobs to the ECW. No, 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 I don't. I don't I don't think that anything like that will happen. Yeah, and my last thing, did you check out the picture they send you of the Vincent the banana? and Trish? The banana picture? I saw the banana picture. It was hilarious. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. I do check that. I got to, uh, what do I got to do? I got to email that to somebody. Maybe they won't laugh. I don't know. That's pretty good laugh. stuff now. Hey, email that to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, email to A Al. Al ALG at Yada.com, he had the banana picture of Vincent Trish. I saw one of Bischoff and uh, supposedly DDP's wife. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Kay Fabe. Oh, sorry. Uh, but you guys, what? Is, 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 is Dennis up next? <laughs> okay, Dennis, what's up? Yeah, I'd like to find out what your opinion is. Uh, now, on the WCW, they, they just have too many guys that Vince can use. Now, what guys do you think will not make the cut? Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett Scott, Steiner, Rick, Scott Steiner, Rick Steiner, Lex Luger, Buff Bagwell, Brian Pillman, Tom Zink, <laughs> Nick Rude, Ultimate Warrior. Who yeah. else? Uh, Brian. Hogan. Uh, uh, Scott Hall, maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but it's really not up. You know, you really can't charge say right now. Uh, Jared one hundred eighty thousand dollars to come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, really good. that's, that's like a, his, his. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. he's with the woman over again. Uh, so There'll be no Craig Leathers, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh my! No well, what do you think about the cruiserweight? Are they going to have a cruiserweight division? They could care less now. Oh really? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. As far as like, they got so many guys there. 
But it's going to be tough because you're going against. You got to remember that the guy who owns it—that is not his mentality. And exactly. you know, other guys may suggest it, but ultimately, I mean, ultimately, the big decisions are going to be made by Vince. Yeah. And obviously, cruiserweights are not, you know, in his game plan. And Shane and Shane grew up, you know, with Vince McMahon's wrestling. It's you know, if Shane had grown up and watched another form of wrestling and just said, "Hey, I'm going to do," you know, I, again, nothing's yeah, for sure. They're going to make their own decisions. Yeah, but I open to new ideas. Yeah. What? You know, what do you think about Dusty Rhodes and Dustin? They come back with two black valets each. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, that'd be good. Uh, yeah, cause you know, I, mean, I mean, but the thing is, even with, with Paul Heyman, who did a lot of lighter weight guys in ECW, and he does have a lot of input right now, he never had actually a cruiserweight division because he let his cruiserweights, you know, hold the TV title and the tag team titles all the time. But it, it, it was never, it was never called cruiserweights. Yeah, and he mixed and matched. And, yeah, exactly. you know, did that underdog stuff with, like, Spike and Guido and all that. I think, like, you know, those, I think Guido will probably end up in WCW. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just because just, just there's all those guys he could work with, you know, Shane Helms, Chavo Guerrero, you know. Yeah. They could book uh, Pauly and Flair in a garbage can match. I saw that one time. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Pauly went over. To, um, whoever happened to Randy, this Randy Savage? Nothing. Uh, Randy Savage is, uh... He's trying to do a radio show. I know that. I think that uh, Randy Savage, you know, but Randy Savage too wasn't even working when there were two companies. So, hmm. you know, there's no big demand for him. And I, you know, I think, you know, if, if anything else, we'll be seeing him on television shows or something like that. And Lanny was getting paid. Huh? Uh, not lately, but he was for years and years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did have one of the best jobs in wrestling, didn't he? Yeah. Him and Beefcake. I always was. Yeah. Him. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Al, anybody left, anybody left to go? Okay, Brian, what's up? Yeah. Hey, guys, um, just up on the Torch website, and they got the list of guys that signed, or yeah. that they bought the contracts over. Would you like to okay, hear Okay, tell, tell, tell me the list. Talk to me, baby. Okay. Um, they bought Storm's contract, O'Hare's, Awesome, Palumbo, Hold on. Awesome, Hancock, Palum- Helms. Stacey Keebler, I knew, yeah. Hey, more. I knew. Sanders. Sanders? Uh, uh, Morris. Sanders? Sanders? Sanders, Hugh Morris, Billy Kidman, Billy mm-hmm. Skipper, Chavo Guerrero Jr. Here's a sort of surprise. Stasiak. No! Oh, yep. Man. No, I knew that one. I knew that one, yeah. Kaz, uh, Kaz Yang, yeah. and uh, Mark Hendrick. Okay, but the thing on them all the is that every one of these guys, every one of these guys has 90-day cycles, so I think it was just that all these guys were low contracts. So it was just, you know what I mean? I don't know that the, this, it doesn't indicate that, like, that all these guys are going to necessarily have jobs when this is all said and done. It's just sort of like the ones that, you know, the, the, they're the ones that they would have interest in. And they can renegotiate with them. And also because basically when you look at that list, in almost every case, most of them are not used to making big money in wrestling. So they can renegotiate them with, you know, pretty low, pretty low price, if you know what I mean. Cheap talent to fill out cars. Yeah. And he also has there that um, there's only four... Um Guys that are under guaranteed contracts that do have any interest in it at all. Mm. And it's on Page, Flair, Goldberg, and on Booker T. Um, I think that that's correct, based on what I was told, too. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Thank okay, you. very welcome. Right. I know Booker T, they're real high on Goldberg, they are, but, you know, the they're they're about questioning the attitude of Flair. And Page is not is not a lock, but they do have some interest in Page because they know he works hard. Oh, yeah, what are they going to dress him up as, Brian? <laughs> as a gimmick? Yeah, you know. They're going to have fun with that dude. <laughs> yeah, Forrest Gump. Hey, let's go to Dan. Dan, hey, what's up? What's hey, up how with are you? you? What's up with me? Yeah. Oh, fine. What's going on with Vince McMahon? As far as? He Did just he not you? I heard that he was quitting. Quitting what? Quitting the whole wrestling thing. He wants to devote everything into his uh, XFL thing. What were you on? Mike the Mad Dog a second ago. What's that? Were you listening to Mike and the Mad Dog? No, I, I was listening. I called in, and that's what I heard you guys say. Oh, uh, we did not say that. So Vince McMahon, as far as you know, is not quitting. What he's not smoking? quitting. Uh, no, he's absolutely not. Why do you? I'm just fine. saying. Where's this call coming from? Jamaica, man. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Listen, do you, is this true or not? Vince McMahon is not quitting wrestling by any way, shape, or form. He just bought WCW yesterday. I heard that he did it as a tax write-off. Mm, he, he's got an XFL. I don't think he needs tax write-offs. <laughs> <laughs> Very 
Tip this dress. fuck cock, cock suck a motherfucker and tits. All right, tip bye. This fuck it's a shame okay. when cousins marry. Yeah, oh. all right, guys. That was that was Dan from the Dan and Scott show. They wanted to play oh, a little prank. So Dan, they're oh. running on us. Very good. Yes, let's see. How does WCW... Okay, okay J.D., look at promotion, good. Lonnie Yada. Look at that. Yeah. J.D., right. what's up? J.D. Okay, I'm mm-hmm. here. Um, the one thing, after looking at that list, what do you think about Stasiak? I mean, he left he left WWF the first time under such bad terms with the whole taping of other wrestlers' conversations. Why right, do you think they would bring him back? Um, like because, he's tall, because he's tall and he has a good body, and it's the same reason why Luger had a job for the last 15 years. <laughs> and then one other That's thing, um, I know there's probably not time to touch on this, but what do you think about uh, the possibility of the whole belt situation? With uh, maybe unifying some of the titles, not now. I mean, not, 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 not at some point, sure, but not now. Not, yeah. for, not you know, not till they you know a year from now. They gotta make those WCW titles mean something right now. I mean, they're just they are really just props. They don't yeah, and those cruiserweight tag titles are ugly. Those are about the ugliest okay. belts I've okay. seen in a while. Okay, well, I want to make mention of something uh, real quick. Um, as far as um, you know, like some of the names, you know, one of the key names I just noticed not on the list which I guess I wasn't supposed to talk about, but I knew last night, is uh, Mysterio. So you can all draw into that conclusion about smaller guys right there. Hmm. Anyway, we are totally out of time, and uh, this was a great show. I want to thank Tom and Jeff. Also thank Alex Marvez for coming on with the group report on uh, Linda McMahon's thing. And, of course, Monday is going to be one of the biggest nights in wrestling. We're going to have a whole bunch of angles. So, anyway, we will be back here Monday at 5. And I want to thank also Al, and I want to thank all the callers and listeners because the last three weeks... Uh, our audience has grown tremendously. We get emails like crazy, and I know we don't have a chance to get to all the emails, but uh, we do read all of them, and I want to thank everyone for your support. We'll be back Monday.